Ay. Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome to my channel. So, um, I've put on Instagram that I was sick, and that's why I didn't post these past two weeks. And I also promised that I would tell you the details of what happened and how, why it was so hard. So, on, let's get to the story. So, on Sunday, two Sundays ago, on the 9th, I believe, um, I woke up in the morning and I had uh, my lymph nodes under my armpits and in the back of my neck was swelled up and uh, I had a fever and I had like few spots on my chest and so uh, we decided like okay let's go check this out so we went to the um, hospital good gone gone it's in Gongali like close to us and we went there and we entered and we like went to the front desk and we gave them my ID and they didn't speak English so they pretty much just told us to wait and we were in the waiting area where visitors were waiting so we weren't even sure what we were waiting for um, and then Sam like went back and was like hey like what are we waiting for kind of thing and he used his like um, Google translation and like wrote what we're waiting for and they said for someone that to come, like someone that speaks English to come. So we were just sitting there waiting for someone that speak that spoke English to come and like help us. But no one seemed to be there. So I was just sitting there and I was in a lot of pain and fever it was like high and we didn't even have like uh, anywhere like any way to measure it so we didn't know how high it was, we just know I had fever and I couldn't really move my arms because my armpit both of them were swelled up and so we um, kept, I think Sam went the second time and asked like can you please help us like we will use Google Translation or something so then a doctor and like three or four nurses came out to the waiting area like they didn't let us in I'm not sure why but we um, were sitting out in the visitors area and that's where the doctor came and he like touched my lymph nodes and he said um, they don't have an isolation room to put me in which I don't know what it meant but they told they sent me to a different hospital so we got on the train and we went to a different hospital that they sent us to um, when we got there they, we went to Hayende Pick Hospital, so those of you that live in Busan, they were so efficient. I loved how they did everything when we walked in. It was huge and there were peop like employees um, of the hospital. I guess they were just like front desk people, but they weren't in the desk, they were outside, um, like in the hallway just roaming around if people need help. And everything, all the signs had English as well. So we uh, approached a woman and she was like, oh, come with me, and she took us where we would check in. Uh, when we went there, the guy that was checking in, um, he spoke English, and he took my ID and checked me in, and he sent me to the next room um, and told me to wait, but we didn't even wait. The, a nurse called me and took my uh, temperature and uh, blood pressure and all that stuff, and then he then took me inside the ER and that's um, he told me to just wait there and I didn't even wait honestly like I just sat down and then the, a doctor came like she spoke English um, not so much English but she tried and that was you know amazing um, she uh, had a paper and pen and she wrote down like my symptoms and like um, she um, I think told me to wait to get my blood test and I was just telling me that someone came and they said we have a bed for you and they gave me like the gown and yeah so we spent three hours or almost four hours in the ER that day and within those 
four hours. They took my blood test, my urine test, and all that stuff. And they were able to determine through the blood test that I had an infectious disease, um, which was, it's, an, it's not a viral infection. What was It was bacterial infection, infection. So they gave me medication for it. And uh, the medicine included um, antibiotics, but then it also included other things, uh, Tylenol and two other things, um, which we got from the pharmacy next door, and then we came home. But we came home, and I took the medicine, and I, um, while I was in the ER, I messaged my... Um, co-worker who's like kind of like my leader and she uh, I told her that I was in the hospital and then she said like oh I'm gonna come right now and I'm like wait no they're about to release me so like they're about to like let me go home don't come she's like well let me talk to the doctor then so that helped a lot because she gave her more information about what that I have uh, a bacterial infection and like all that stuff um, and so also they I have really uh, narrow uh, veins so that they can find it so like getting blood was a hustle so like that's also why it took so long and um, anyway we did that and it was over like thank god came home and um, start on the medicine my te my uh, like co-worker she said like don't come home uh, don't come to work um, tomorrow just see how you feel so I said okay and I um, took the medicine and I woke up the next morning I woke up with those little spots on my chest like my entire body and like the new one kept coming and the fever went up high and we were like oh maybe this is like you know, it gets worse before it gets better. So, like, we just kind of waited out. And then on Tuesday, I woke up with even more. And they're not, like, like a rush. It's not, like, little dots. It was big patches, and, like, it was red, and it was inflated all over my body. So, um, touching it would hurt. And um, so on Tuesday, um, when I woke up, I had them on my hands. And on the b bottom of my feet so then it was hard to stand up so I couldn't really walk I couldn't hold anything or move my arm because the swelling was still there so then at this point I'm like a handicap like I couldn't do anything and um, it was just really sad and so I told my leader at work that and she came um, she was like I'm taking you to a clinic so a different because I mean they did what they could in the hospital I didn't want to go back there so we wanted to have a different opinion from like a different doctor so we went to this clinic and the woman uh, thought it was a bug bite which I knew it wasn't a bug bite because I never had any bug bite me or anything like that so the then she wanted to do the same test that the hospital already did and we just thought okay this is a waste of time let's just go back home and then um, Wednesday, I woke up, and then this time it was just bad. It was it was horrible. So like I have even more all over my body, and my fever is just high still. I uh, can can't move my arms because one was really pretty swelled up, and then the other one was okay. But then by that point though, like both of them were swelled up. Um, I had one over here, but then a fourth one starts swelling up so then I was like okay like so my leader again calls the doctor from the same ER that we went to but like a different doctor like a higher doctor I guess not an ER doctor but like an actual doctor so she phones him and he's like bring her in so I go there and he like checks me and like he did everything and he was like all like the, the tests that they did at the ER are all the tests we could have done and it's not giving us like what it is like we don't know what it is um, so he's like I'm gonna admit you to like the hospital and we're gonna do more tests so I said okay it was a Wednesday he had me in the hospital then we went to a dermatologist 
we went to, I did a, like a CT scan, um, we went to a gynecologist, um, they checked for lymph nodes, uh, like lymphomia, they thought it could have been a lymphomia, um, but it's all in the same building though, so just different like floors. So uh, when the day I got admitted, I didn't even like sit in my room. I literally was just like doing different tests. And then the next day they did, on Thursday, they um, they were monitoring my fever, but they also did more uh, blood tests. Um, and then they were, they were um, doing, uh, they did this thing where they, it's kind of like a sonogram. But, yeah? A sonograph. Yeah, it was like a sonograph, but not for like, didn't do it on my stomach. They did it all like around my neck. To see the lymph nodes. If yeah, to see the lymph nodes, and then they were going to do a biopsy. So they were going to take a, a little bit of my skin from my neck, and they were going to like research it or something. But uh, the lymph nodes on my, neck, on my neck wasn't big enough for them to take so um, then they kind of just said okay so on Friday they were going to do a mammogram which was also going to show them the lymph nodes on my armpit they were going to take tissue and they were going to uh, do a biopsy and they're going to research it because they they have no idea what this was uh, but luckily on Friday there was no um, like everything for the mammogram was booked so they didn't have any available spot and I was just done with tests you know so anyway on Friday um, night I my fever broke so I was at 36.5 and it was consistent that whole night so I was like okay like let me go home now because it's just the hospital room is shared with four other women so it was just it wasn't it wasn't comfortable and so I just wanted to come home so I asked them and they said that like no we're gonna do the mammogram and you're gonna go after the weekend's over and I just I just really wanted to spend the weekend at home so I begged them and when they didn't have any slot for me to do my the mammogram um, they agreed to send me home so Friday I was released and um, came home but so the first set of medicine they gave me Apparently, it was what was making me like super sick and like making the rush spread. That's what we thought, and they didn't admit to that. But once I got there, they stopped me from that medicine, and then the swelling started going down. So we think that it's the medicine because the second time, so when I left, when I got discharged, I came home with medicine. Um, I came home with antibiotic and two other things like one was for ulcer for stomach and the other one was for inflammation so these are the medicine that I got this is for ulcer and this is for inflammation or you know, vice versa um, and then uh, so I came home on Friday and I took what they told me to take these two and the antibiotic and it got worse so I was more sick I was puking everywhere. Uh, I had a headache, but it was more like a migraine, so I couldn't see any light. I couldn't hear any sound. I could not sit or lay down. I could only walk. Walking is the only thing that soothed it. And then, um, and every time I took a medicine or ate, I would puke it out, which would add pressure to my head. And the only time I slept was when I like just pass out because I was too exhausted and there was so much pain. Um, so then we call the doctor again on Saturday and he says, oh, you have to come back. And I was like, no, cause they're going to put me in back in like a room and just let me lay down there, you know? So then we decided no, but Sam and I made a decision to stop the two medicine because it's happened before like that, um, the medicine was making me more sick. So we thought maybe let's, we know it's not good to stop antibiotic, but we were like, what about the other two? And um, so we stopped these two. That's why I still have these, because I just stopped taking them. 
and I just kept taking the antibiotic and the swelling start going down. Um, I stopped puking. My headache went away and I was able to eat and um, my fever already broke so my, the swelling started going down. The neck one disappeared because it wasn't as big and then the armpit one got smaller and then we kept doing that on Sunday as well and yeah so then it went down so I mean yeah I still had infection but um, it wasn't as exaggerated and crazy um, but the hospital seemed like they they didn't they were like we can't let you go because we didn't diagnose you so they were really obsessed with like diagnosing me more than like healing me I guess you know but um, yeah so that was Sunday, and then on Monday, <laughs> the side effect, I guess, of the antibiotic was that, like, your feet swell up, so my feet were swelled up, um, so it was kind of hard to, like, go to work. I went to work, I still tried to elevate my feet and everything, but then they sent me home early, and then on Tuesday it was the same, but today is Wednesday, and I went to the hospital because I had to check up they needed me to come back and they took blood and they um, checked my blood and they told me that I don't have any more infection so that's nice but I do have inflammation so um, I, I don't see any on the outside but probably on the inside um, so they didn't give me medicine for that or anything I don't want any more medicine um, but yeah so it kind of just we're just waiting it out, you know, making sure I'm eating clean. Um, the sad thing though is since they never diagnosed me, like they never figured out what it was, uh, they said a maybe, um, they said maybe it is uh, keikuchi, which is a Japanese uh, term and it's a Japanese disease I guess and it's uh, named after a Japanese researcher. Um, I, they, but then it didn't match, the symptoms didn't match, so they don't know. So the sad thing is that I don't know what it is or what caused it, so I can't really prevent it. So I don't know what to do not to get it again. So um, I guess I'm just going to have to be careful. Um, so today um, he told me that I don't have any more, uh, what is it, um, infection, but he said that um, I could get it again. Um, I'm more likely to get it again, um, but I guess now if I get it again, I know what to do mm, because I've kind of done it and I went through the hard way. So, uh, those of you that work for Epic or will be working for Epic, um, your insurance, you don't even need an insurance card once you give them your ID, your insurance is attached to your ID, so um, they will automatically find out, find your insurance. So that was easiest part surprisingly um, but overall this was super hard because first in the hospital you would want to express your feeling you would want to talk to your doctor or the nurse how you're feeling and like so they can really understand you you know like that was hard because I couldn't really talk to them even if I did they wouldn't really understand me and whatever they're trying to say as well, I can understand. So the lack of communication and um, the time of need really was very, very difficult. Um, and so that was, I think, like the main thing that, that made it like super difficult. Um, and then um, I guess like being in a different country, not having your family around, that's also rough. Um, but luckily, I um, have my husband, which he did literally everything. He he did my like hair, he washed my hair, he like dressed me, he like took me places, um, fed me, at least tried to feed me, uh, clean up my mess because I was peeking everywhere, um, and like cooked for me, and like just he did everything, and he slept on like pretty much on the floor in a small mat on um, in the hospital, and uh, I'm so 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 grateful and blessed to have him. But also, um, I had friends come and check on me, um, and it just shows that um, you become 
family with friends when you're away from your family and it's really beautiful but the biggest thing that happened through this was that um, I think for me um, when I didn't know what was going on and like everything just seemed to be like a dead end um, I had no choice but to turn to God and um, I think that m I I don't know like I feel like my relationship with God has been stronger through this situation um, and just I don't know was I was able to realize how blessed I am um, that God was able to uh, rescue me and save me because you know at the point at the moment of like you don't know anything that's happening to you in a foreign country it's scary um, but it, it just you know God used the situation where I was vulnerable to you know really connect to my heart come into my heart and then like just spend more time like you know like I used to because like I felt like I've been busy and all that's with uh, all that um, with moving here so yeah that's what happened and um, thank God I am okay now I am uh, infection free uh, I could get it possibly but you know if I do now I know how to fight back so yeah and if you guys have any questions especially epic employees unlike um, any documentation like or like insurance and all that stuff please comment below um, otherwise um, I will be posting uh, we actually are planning a um, couple trips so we're going to be blogging those and um, yeah I'm alive I am well and I am better than ever um, mentally and emotionally and spiritually so that's good that's a good thing that came out of it you know and other than that don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below whatever questions you have or anything else so yeah thank you for watching Bye.